Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics, and this DCS F16C Viper video will explore the ground map or GM and C modes of the Viper's air to ground fire control radar mode. In a later video, we'll discuss the ground moving target or GMT mode once complete. AG Radar Mode operates both in navigation and air to ground master modes and provides an all weather radar generating image of the terrain, buildings, and other large features ahead of the aircraft. In GM and C modes, the radar can provide detailed imagery that then can be used to set a sensor point of interest to cue other sensors like the targeting pod. Let's get started. Alrighty, so uh, let's get started talking about the FCR and air to ground mode. Now, to get to the air-to-ground mode of the FCR, probably the easiest and fastest way is simply to select the air-to-ground master mode button up here on the ICP. And we do that, places us into air-to-ground mode, and we can see that we have the FCR and air-to-ground mode up on the left MPD. Let's go ahead and zoom in. Now we can see about uh, three quarters up, we have a not SOI message or not sensor of interest. So as you're probably aware, to make this our sensor of interest, we'll simply go aft on the display management switch or DEMA switch on the stick. So now it is indicated by the box around the periphery of the display. Now, just like in air-to-air -air mode, the display is range and azimuth. So the uh, y-axis is our range and the x-axis is our azimuth. And we can adjust the range in one of two ways, either manually or automatic. And that's done through OSB2 here at the top. And when it says manual, it means by pressing OSB2, we'll go to manual mode. So given that, we're right, right now, we're actually in automatic mode. And it will change the scale automatically when the crosshairs are near the very top or the very bottom of the display. Or we can actually manually slew down and it'll change it automatically, you can see as well. If we go to manual mode, we can now use the OSBs at 19 and 20 to manually adjust the scale range. Below that, we have our azimuth setting. So right now we're in 60 degrees of azimuth. Press the OSB, we have 30 degrees. One more time, we're only at 10 degrees. And as you might imagine, the more narrow the azimuth, the faster the update, but the less area that we're actually looking at. Below that, we have the enhanced ground mode, which gives us a much more detailed image of the scan area, uh, particularly in the uh, center quarter of it. Or we can go to real beam map, which is gonna be a much faster update, but as you can see, a much lower resolution. I'm pretty partial to uh, EGM. Below that, we have our bullseye, which we talked about in a uh, video just recently. And we can either have the steering cue or bullseye information, uh, bullseye to our own ship. And just a quick review, we can go to list, miscellaneous, bullseye, and enable it. And now we have the bullseye information up here. Let's talk about some of the outside controls and the rockers. Uh, first, we have the gain control. And based on the gain setting, the carrot here will go up and down. So we can increase the gain, see the carrot go up or decrease. On the other side, we can adjust the symbology brightness. By holding it down, we can actually make it so dim we don't even see it anymore. Then we have the overall display contrast. Then the overall display brightness. And to get the best image, obviously you want to play around with these as best you can. Okay, let's jump over to a different part of the world. Now, before we go too much further, let's talk a little bit about how the air to ground radar picture is formed. And that's by the reflectivity of the surface or ground objects that the radar is scanning. And essentially, the higher the reflectivity that the uh, surface will bounce back that signal, the brighter that return is going to be. So generally, man-made objects like buildings, power lines, vehicles will have a bright return, where something that will absorb the radar signal, such as water, 
will not return and come back black. So in this example here, we're approaching Batumi. So we can see a lot of the, uh, the cities and the buildings uh, around it come at as a bright return. Whereas the Black Sea is black, uh, the river to the south is also black. And we can also see our radar shadows, or essentially areas behind the mountains that the radar cannot see, which come back as a black return. Uh, next, let's talk a little bit about the different uh, air-to-ground radar modes. Uh, right now we're in ground map, but there are other modes. And we can see those by going to OSB1, and now they're listed here on the right side. So, of course, we have ground map, which we're in right now. Then below that, we have ground moving target, or GMT. And we'll talk about that uh, a bit later when that's implemented. Next, we have C mode, which function, functions almost the exact same as ground map, but it'll be a bit more sensitive uh, to detecting targets on non-cluttered environments like a sea surface at a low sea state. Uh, beacon, we are not planning, and then we have standby mode. For now, we're gonna go back to ground map. Now, so far in this video, we've been in normal mode, which you can see here under OSB3. But we also have the option to hit OSB3 again to go to expand mode, and also we can get there by hitting the expand button on the control stick. And we do so, we'll essentially be going uh, into a 24 by one uh, scale in the center of the crosshairs marked by the hash marks. So we'll hit the expand button. We see we have a big black area in front of us, and that's because we're not building any Doppler shift to build an image directly ahead of us. So I'm going to offset a bit off to the right. A uh, little plus sign indicates the location of the image we're building in relation to the larger uh, normal image. And once the crosshairs are outside of that uh, black area, I'm going to go wings level again. But as you can see, it's uh, pretty darn blurry, so we're going to hit uh, OSB3 again, or the expand button on the stick again, and we're going to go to Doppler Beam Sharpening 1, which will also be a 24 to 1, but a lot sharper. Now we can actually start to see a runway and a taxiway. We're going to go again now to DBS2 at 64 to 1. Yeah, now it's really starting to look like an airfield. We can also uh, tighten up our azimuth, which is 10 degrees, since we're really zoomed in here. We're still at 40 mile scale. Let's go to manual scale, go to 20, go to 10. And at this point, we can really make out all the runways, the taxiways, the parking ramps, and we can even see aircraft parked on the ramp itself. But to make targeting really easy, we'll hit the freeze button OSB. And now we can use the radar cursor switch to slew around the crosshairs place it over a target we want to target, and press forward on the target management switch, or TMS, to make that a fixed target track. We also have the coordinates of that right up here. Now at this point, that location is our sensor point of interest, or SPI, that we could base an attack on. And before I let you go, we'll go over just the last few things. Uh, first, we have the uh, override function on OSB4, which you can use to silence the radar. On OSB5, we have the control functions, and we're planning on several of these, but these are going to be functional for the GMT mode. Uh, we're not going to worry about Barrow. Uh, coming down, we have the snowplow mode, or SP, and normally the uh, radar would be initialized at the sighting option, uh, often the steer point, but when snowplow is initiated by pressing it, we now have the radar looking out directly ahead of the aircraft, and as we maneuver, it will move with us. When in this mode, we can also go uh, TMS forward, and then using the radar cursor slew switch, we can move the crosshairs, go TMS forward again, and set an FTT, and that can act as our new speed. Uh, to exit, we'll go TMS aft. Below that, we have our cursor zero, or CZ, and just like on the targeting pod, if we press that, it's going to bring our crosshairs uh, back to our uh, cursor zero position, which is our steer point. Uh, finally, here at the bottom, we have our sighting options. Right now, it's in target, and these are uh, things that we're still working on. And finally, down here in the corner, we have a timer. And this can vary. It can be either the time to steer point, it can be time to release a weapon, or time for the uh, weapon to impact. Anyhow, folks, I very much hope you enjoyed this video on the radar uh, in air ground mode, and I will see you next time.